We begin with our prayer to St. Jude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant, and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many. But the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me, who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly. And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. The apostles could use a break. Jesus sent them out to preach in all the towns, and they've come back, and they could use a rest. But to make matters worse, they have caused such a stir that everyone is flocking to them. In religious life, we jokingly refer to this as the curse of competency. If you make the mistake of doing something well, they're going to want to make you do more and more and more and more of it. Perhaps until you are so overwhelmed that you have no opportunity even to eat. So you try to get your day off. You try to escape to a deserted place for a bit. But somehow they still find you. There's a certain sadness we encounter when, especially because of other people, we are deprived of our good. Maybe it's just the good of food and rest. Maybe it's our whole livelihood and everything we hold dear. Maybe it comes from the constant grind of service in the church. Perhaps the demands of our children. Maybe it's from far greater hardships and evils. And we can't just make the suffering go away. We're called to respond to these people and situations well. And not get bogged down by the sadness. Or turn instead to anger. And there's a virtue for that we call patience. Patience is about enduring suffering well. Sometimes it's in little things. Sometimes it's in big things. Sometimes it's easy because our hearts are moved with pity. And love moves us to help others with their burdens and even renders those burdens light. Sometimes we're at our breaking point, and we're not sure if we can take any more. We often speak of how God is patient. And there's something very instructive about God's patience. God, of course, wants our conversion now. He knows that if we gave our entire life to him now, we would be so much happier. 
And he would rather I enjoy the fullness of life with him now because he loves me. But since God is eternal, he beholds all of time as an eternal now. As scripture expresses it, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. It is utterly impossible to try God's patience. God can wait. He can wait for our conversion till the very end of our life, and he will never tire of waiting. What matters is that it happens. We are the ones who lose patience. We lose patience with ourselves as we find ourselves confessing the same sins again and again, falling in the same way. We become impatient with our spiritual progress. But God, who wants our conversion now, never loses an ounce of patience with us. We need to imitate that patience. We want the good now. And whatever it is, we should never stop wanting the good now. But we can wait as long as it takes. Of course, God in his divinity doesn't exactly suffer. And we're not outside of time. We have to endure it. And often we don't know what is good. And struggle to accept that some really amazing goods will not come to us and forget the ultimate and limitless good that awaits us in heaven. And so perhaps a better example is Mary's patience. Mary was one of us, and yet her patience was truly heroic. In a life without sin, she bore everyone else's faults patiently. She knew her son, knew his power and his purpose, and she waited 30 years for it to be revealed. She endured his passion by his side, though it pierced her heart, loving even those who crucified him. She awaited his resurrection and then comforted the apostles when he ascended and had not yet sent the Holy Spirit. Then in love she remains with them though she really had nothing else in this world until she was finally taken up body and soul into heaven from which she continues to watch over her children and suffer alongside us. St. Thomas Aquinas says that in this fallen world, there is no real virtue of patience without grace. As 1 Corinthians chapter 13 said, love is patient. The love of God, which we call charity, is patient because God's friendship, His love, is the only thing really worth that habitual enduring of all suffering that we see in the heroic patience of Mary. If we want to grow in patience and we want it to be a habitual part of our lives, we have to remain close to God. In God, we can recognize that We've already received our greatest good. We already have His love. And we've already received His promise that if we stick with Him, we can really have that joy of eternal life. A 
as we turn to our Lord present in this most blessed sacrament. May we recognize here that love, that sacrament of charity worth all suffering and endurance. May we face then all the suffering in our lives well. Never crushed by sorrow. Never doubting the Lord's patience. And having the same patience with ourselves even as we never cease in our desire for the good. And maybe one step further. As our Lord's heart was moved with pity for them for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And as Our Lady continues to suffer alongside all her children, may we seek to offer heroic patience to others who are suffering as well. Bearing something of their burdens out of the same love that has been shown to us. And let us conclude with our Novena prayer. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, You are the refuge of sinners, the health of the sick, and the comfort of the afflicted. You know my wants, my troubles, and my sufferings. By Your appearance at the Grotto of Lourdes, You made it a privileged sanctuary where Your favors are given the people streaming to it from the whole world. Over the years, countless sufferers have obtained the cure for their infirmities, whether of soul, mind, or body. Therefore, I come to you with St. Jude as my patron and implore your motherly intercession. Obtain, O loving Mother, the grant of my requests through your to, to, for your favors. I will endeavor to imitate your virtues, that I may one day share in your glory. Amen.